I remember the pitches being like this. And when scouts won't just come and make one opinion on you like the first time they see you. They'll, they'll come back and watch a few times. So as I'm getting older, I'm sort of realising, oh, maybe that bar of chocolate I can't have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I took like penalties, free kicks, corners. <laughs> I thought Big Sam was there, and uh, he sort of, which was cool because it was like the manager, first team manager. Yeah. And he'd come and shook all our hands as like eight year olds. Yes, Rob, how are you doing, mate? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you, good, thank you. I thought I'd rep an old school Arsenal shirt. Are you feeling it? What are you thinking? Yeah, I like it. A bit tight on the arms as well. You've been hitting the bicep. <laughs> the only thing I couldn't decide is whether to go collar down or collar up. What do you reckon? Uh, who was collar up in that time? What player? I can't really think of an Arsenal player, but I, I don't know. United did it, yeah, but... yeah. Right, today we want to find out from you what it takes to become a professional footballer. Now, obviously, there are lots of things what it takes to become a professional footballer, but we've broken it down into five things, and that is belief, resilience, nutrition, hard work, and enjoyment, okay? With enjoyment, what is your earliest memory of playing football, and how much did you enjoy it? Uh, earliest memory of playing football would be just from our local uh, like kids team, Stadybridge Celtic Juniors, and um, I remember the pitches being like this, and we used to have to run around in the morning. Our warm up was like knocking down the little molehills that they formed overnight. Yeah, yeah. You know, knock them down so it was flat. Um, but yeah, just it was loads of pitches, and there was all different players playing in different teams, and uh, yeah, just scoring goals and enjoying little seven-a-side football. Scoring goals, so what position did you play? Were you further up the pitch then? Uh, no, I was I was at the back. We played two at the back and I was one of, one of them at the back. And um, But I took like penalties, free kicks, corners. <laughs> I took the throw-ins because they had the long throw. Like, yeah, I was yeah. the on the team. And uh, yeah, I think we just sort of, I'd shoot from anywhere really and I was a bit bigger and scored a lot of goals to be fair. Nice, nice. How important is it to enjoy your football at that age rather than take it so seriously, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't even thinking that this is a potential career option, you know, I wasn't I wasn't even thinking that far ahead. I was, what, seven, six, seven years old. I was just wanting to kick a football about with my mates and play play games, really. And uh, yeah, that the, think the thought of making a career out of this never really come into my mind until I was a lot, lot older. So next next stage is belief. So obviously you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to you know believe your own hype that you are a good player so you can be confident in, in certain situations. Do you remember the day that you got scouted? I, rem I remember, yeah, being at Stabry Celtic Juniors, we were in the clubhouse a bit after, and there was some guy talking to my dad, but I was just with, I was with the other kids who were just sort of still running around, still loads of energy to burn in the, them days. And um, yeah, yeah just my dad got given a card, and on the drive home, he just said, a team called Follow Wonders want to have you uh, training with them. And at, at the time, I was just like, all oh, right, okay, like, you know, like we, do we do that? You just see, but I was just like, yeah, we'll go see how it is, see how you like it. And I went and enjoyed it and stuff, and ended up signing with them. Nice. And how did you prepare for that trial? Yeah, I just went and did it and enjoyed it. And the fact I enjoyed it was the main reason I went back. And from there, it took off of being what it what it became as like going through the whole academy system. So you weren't nervous at all going into that? I think the only nervous feeling I had was nothing to do with the football. It was more about meeting a new team and yeah interacting with new lads and sort of building friendship, friendships that you don't have at the time. You've just got to sort of find where you'd fit in the team and who you sort of get on with and pal along with. And what did you exactly do in that trial? It was um, more sort of team training. It wasn't like we just went and played matches, but we didn't also do like just one-on-one -on -one boring stuff because at the time I'd find that boring and I wanted to just play, play football and play yeah. games. So it was a lot of game oriented stuff, which makes me enjoy it more. Of course, of course. Okay, and the next part is resilience. So, did you ever experience any setbacks while you were young? And like, maybe it was an injury, a rejection, and if so, how did you get over it? A rejection part probably was when I was sort of just on the cusp of sort of going to the reserve team from the 18s, and um, I'd been playing reserves football the year before, and then I thought I was going to get offered like a pro, a pro deal, my first pro contract. Mm. And um, I got offered a third year scholar, which was like an extension of like your apprenticeship thing which like didn't really sit well with me and I didn't really want to do that. But I ended up sort of sticking to it and there was options to go somewhere else, but I thought you've got a team that obviously wants you. You go and you can move to a team that you don't really know. And I just sort of stayed and played through that third year. And obviously during that year, sort of broke into the first team and made a bit of an impact there. So yeah, it was that was a big setback and a, very, a big disappointment. 
but it was just how I was resilient, like you say, to, to fight through that and earn a place in the first team. And what would you say the key is to standing out in, in a trial situation or to be seen by a scout? Is there something you should do in particular? Maybe it comes back to, you know, just looking like the player that's enjoying this football and not taking it too seriously. But is there something that you think can help you stand out? I think if your ability, you'll, you'll stand out just by playing your game. Like, I, I was never one that we like to be in front in, in the coach's face or anything. I'd sort of always, every team fault, I'd just sort of be at the back, like blended in the background, not really being one to push myself forward. Maybe that'd be a bit of shyness or just not my real style. I'd just rather just play and if the coaches like how well I play, then that's 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 their decision and their opinions. So yeah, I wasn't one to sort of throw myself in front and be the look at me, look at me type person. Did you ever play with a mindset of wanting to be scouted and make it a little bit further? Or did you just literally just play and it happened as a result of your ability? Yeah, it happened as a result of my ability. Like I was going to the games each weekend, scoring goals and having fun. And that's when teams started picking me up and then obviously signing with Bolton, getting more of sort of understanding of football and like the roles you have to play. So I went from being at my local team, getting the ball, dribbling through a team and scoring a goal yeah. to then playing with players that were just as good around me. And then it was sort of like, I had to get the ball, pass it and move and give the ball to the, to the team that were as good as you and could do the things that you'd want to do as well. So you sort of, you brought more discipline into your football that way. Okay, and do you remember the exact moment that you got signed? Like the exact moment you were told, and how did that feel? Yeah, we had um, we all had to. There was about thirteen of us. Obviously, it was seven aside at the time. So the Bolton offered thirteen people to sign, and we had to go to the Reebok Stadium at the time. It was called the Reebok, and um, Big Sam was there, and uh, he sort of, which was cool because it was like the manager, first team manager. Yeah, and he came and shook all our hands as like eight year olds. And I just remember him shaking my hand, and his hand was going <laughs> around mine. <laughs> My hand just disappearing. I was just like, whoa. But um, yeah, then we all went down onto the onto the pitch at the Reebok and we had like a little squad photo. And we're all in like maroon Reebok Bolton jumpers. I think I've probably still got the photo somewhere at my mum and dad's house. I reckon I could pick that up. But yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. The next stage is hard work. What academy players, what do, what do academy players have in their game that you think other people can try and pick up if they're not in an academy already? Is there something that they do in particular? Do they work? Is it, is it is it the hard work, or is it something about their mindset? I think academy players, it's, it's everything is just football, 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 non-stop. From like when you're going through high school and stuff, and we was finishing high school, and I'd have to literally walk home, and then I'd be getting in the car as soon as my dad come home, and we'd normally time it that we both got home at about I think it's like 4 p.m. Just gone four, and we'd leave and we'd go straight to Bolton. Obviously, you got the rush hour around the M60, M60 and stuff around Manchester. Yeah. And then the M61, the traffic was always bad. So we'd, we'd always get to Bolton early and then we'd grab a bite to eat at like a, a Tesco or something. We'd just go in the little dine a bit and have a bite to eat before training. And um, it was just an easier way rather than being stuck in traffic and potentially being late. My dad, he rubbed <laughs> up on me because my dad, I'm always early to stuff and my dad's always been, punctuality is the key, so. <laughs> what would you say to young players watching this who feel massive pressure to try and get scouted and, and try and get into an academy? I don't think you can really put so much pressure on yourself because then you'll just you won't play as well or you'll get too hung up on the fact that you oh you need to play well for them to be scouted. Sometimes they just scouts won't just come and make one opinion on you like the first time they see you. They'll they'll come back and watch a few times. So if you do have a bit of a bad game, don't worry that oh your chance has gone now. Scouts will keep an eye and there'll be scouts at loads of games and I know and I've learned more about their network now and it is it's well, it's nationwide, and there's teams who go to watch every type of every type of game. So there's always opportunities there, and it's just don't go putting that much pressure on yourself. Just enjoy it and see where it takes you. I think that's amazing advice. Don't put too much pressure into one game because there, there could be plenty more, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. How much did you used to train in your own time away from training to try and really up them levels? Yeah, it was always like any time we had a break at school or like during the lunch break. We'd always be down playing football somewhere and it was the worst because you'd come into the classroom after and you'd just be sat there <laughs> into the class but you're sweating and you're just like I feel like you try to catch your breath still but you'd just be playing for like 40, 40 minutes yeah um, and then yeah coming away from school in your own time when you're not training nights you're not training i'd always I remember being out on my street and just kicking a ball with my dad uh going down to the local five-a-side pitch that was AstroTurf and just getting a group of people together and you'd normally turn up with three or four of you and there'd be people on there and it'd just be, yeah, join in. It would never be like, oh, you got to wait till left to go off. It'd always yeah, be yeah. joining in and everyone would try and get me on their team because <laughs> I was the best player at the time. 
So it's basically just playing at any opportunity, just playing as much as you can. Yeah, any opportunity, like just if I had a free two hours, I'd try and at least have a football. If I was just, if I couldn't go anywhere, I'd be in my back garden doing keepy keep ups or yeah. doing little things. Or I'd go down, get a group of mates together. And half terms are the best because you'd either have a camp at the club where you'd be there all day basically, yeah. or you were down at the park and everyone was just playing football constantly. Amazing. Okay, right. The last element is nutrition. How much did you focus on your diet and things you were eating when you were younger? When you're young, you can get away with it. And I was, I wouldn't say I was <laughs> as strict as I am now with my diet. As I'm getting older, I'm sort of realizing, oh, maybe that bar of chocolate I can't have, you know, <laughs> which yeah. is frustrating. But that's the way. That's the that's the way it works. And um, yeah, we'd always sort of as we got to sort of 15, 16, you'd start eating better things the night before and stuff. And eating your, your pasta and stuff to carb up for the games and um, yeah it became, that's when it became like a bit more serious in terms of what I was eating and then now with nutritionists at the club and the level you're at now you, you're constantly monitored and the mm. food that you're given is top so it's important when you're a kid not to be too strict with your diet right because you're only young yeah. you should be too strict yeah if I wanted a bar of chocolate after and the amount of energy you're burning through the day because you are playing as much like now yeah. you'll do like an hour and a half, two hours training, maybe like a gym session after, and then you're not going to go like as a kid. You'd then go out to a park after you got home and play with your mates, your mates yeah. from your local area. So you were doing a hell of a lot more, and I think you could get away with it. And you're younger, you metabolism faster, you can get away with eating the old chocolate bar. Right okay, right. You've given so much advice there, but one big question then. So what do you? What would you say to our readers? What is the one thing that it takes to become a professional footballer? What is the most important thing you'd say? See, I'd always, I always, when I get asked this question, I always think about the enjoyment and the not putting too much pressure on yourself because I think that's when you can really make too many demands of yourself and go into like a negative spiral. So I think it's important to stay relaxed and and not put as much pressure on yourself and just enjoy everything from the little things to the big things and keep keep a positive mindset.